As students get ready to return to classes in the coming weeks, we are continuing to check in with school districts across mid-Missouri on their return plans. This morning, we are joined by the Assistant Superintendent with Moberly School District, Dr. Dustin Fanning. Thank you so much for being on with us this morning. Thank you, Brittany. We appreciate the opportunity to, to speak with you this morning. Absolutely. Now, can you talk to me a little bit about what the options are for students and families in your district for the 2020-21 school year? Sure, Brittany. We have two options available for, for families uh, this school year. Uh, we have a traditional, more traditional in-seat option, obviously, with, with safety precaution for staff and students. We also are offering uh, an online option that we're calling Moberly Online, uh, which is a virtual option for students that, that need that option. Absolutely. And will there be some differences at the different levels of schooling, like high school, middle school, and elementary school? Um, all, all of our K-12 students will have the option to choose either in-seat or Moberly online, depending on uh, what they would prefer. Um, so so the, the, there will be some differences with that virtual, uh, depending on the grade level and, and how we do that. But uh, for the most part, everybody has the option. And what changes is the district making to keep people safe from COVID-19? Yeah, we've, we've been working a long time, actually since about May, Brittany, to, uh, with the health department and other healthcare officials and our, our administrative team and staff to develop uh, plans to make sure that we keep people safe. And um, the, the, the big thing we want to emphasize is that um, if staff or students are ill, uh, they need to contact their health care provider and, and contact their child's school and um, stay at home. Uh, that's the big thing. The other thing that we are doing at school when they arrive, we are doing uh, temperature screening checks for staff and students. Um, we're also encouraging uh, uh, parents to transport their kids if at all possible. We are also working with our, our service provider, our transportation service provider, Apple Bus, to make sure we keep people safe on the on the bus and, and, and social distance as best we can. Uh, obviously, we are also um, working with our custodial and maintenance staff to uh, disinfect high touch surface areas uh, more frequently and uh, handrails, doorknobs, countertops, restrooms, um, those sort of things. Um, we're converting our water fountains to bottle filling stations for students um, so that uh, that's, that's safer for them and we still want them to, to have the option to drink water and, and so forth. So. Uh, those are a few of the, the, the things that we're doing at this point, Brittany, um, and things are changing rapidly. Yeah. In our last <clears throat> half hour, we talked about the steps the district is taking to keep students safe. Now, will a mask requirement fall under any of those changes? At this time, uh, in certain instances, Brittany, when social distancing is not possible uh, for our higher risk populations, we are expecting students to wear masks. Um, however, um, uh, we're working very closely with our Randolph County Health Department, and at this time, we're not requiring students wear masks. We are providing masks for our staff, and we're providing one mask for our students uh, when they come uh, to join us uh, August 25th. And how will social distancing work in your schools? Well, each, and we've got eight buildings, Brittany, so each building's a little bit different and the context for each building is different, but each building administrator is working with their teams to, to um, develop plans to maintain social distancing. And they're doing that, they've been doing that the last couple of weeks and working out the details for that to make sure that that's a priority. In some instances, uh, in some learning environments, that's not gonna be possible. And going back to your last question, in those instances is when we will expect students to wear masks. And will there be any changes to attendance policies for students or sick leave for teachers? You know, obviously attendance is, is very important and simply showing up is the first step of being successful for anyone. However, in the midst of a pandemic, other factors must be taken into consideration and Moberly School District will um, discontinue attendance awards that have been prevalent in past years it's also important that we emphasize uh, staff and students are not feeling well or having symptoms of COVID-19. Uh, we're encouraging them to stay at home and contact their local care provider. <clears throat> Absolutely. And what is the plan for if someone in the district does test positive for COVID-19? 
in the event that, that a staff member or um, a student tests positive for COVID-19, we would just ask them to, to make us aware of that. And uh, then we're going to be working closely with our health department. Uh, Randolph County Health Department has done a fabulous job, Brittany, of advising us and working with us uh, to help us through this process. And uh, so they will then um, do the contact tracing and um, to make sure that we are doing the best we can to mitigate the spread of, of COVID-19. Now, things had to shut down pretty quickly last spring. Will there be any adjustments in curriculum to catch up on any subjects missed out last year? Um, Mobile School District at this time is you know, committed to ensuring that students' learning needs are met, even in the midst of a pandemic. Each year during the summer, some of our students experience what we term as summer slide. And we can anticipate that that, that will be the case this year and, and potentially worse in some instances. But over the past few weeks, our, our instructional coaches, our administrators, and our teachers have worked uh, in preparation for the beginning of the school year to account for this and make sure that they are prepared to provide the learning needs for our kids wherever they're at, Brittany, and, and uh, we're excited to have them back. Yeah, and are there any backup plans in place just in case there is a need to shut back down? Um, yes, and, and that was a, a big part of our, our uh, reentry team's work is to make sure that we had plans in place in the event that we had to uh, close school again. Uh, and that will be uh, making sure that all of our instruction can be provided uh, for our students online. And, you know, we, we really, we're really working hard to make sure that we can do that effectively and efficiently and um, uh, make sure that there's accountability with that and providing uh, support for students who need it. And what kinds of events, clubs, or sports will be allowed at your school district and how might they look different than they have in the past? At this time, um, we are we are not canceling any of our extracurricular co-curricular activities. Um, they are a very important part of the school experience and learning opportunities for our kids. Um, at this time, we are not planning to limit these activities. We are taking precautionary measures, uh, and we're working to. We haven't got all that figured out yet, Brittany, but we are working to make sure that we can keep people safe in the event that we have uh, when those events happen and when they arrive. Absolutely. It seems like everything is just kind of a fluid situation as we move through this COVID-19 pandemic. I want to thank you again for joining us this morning, Dr. Fanning. We really appreciate your time. Appreciate it, Brittany. I just want to say that that ultimately we want our we just want to get our, our students back in school and we are looking forward to working with them this school year and throughout this challenging situation. Uh, we're going to make the most of it.